I had a dream. And that dream, it's turned into a nightmare. In this first episode of how not to build the ultimate Pro Street Mustang, I'll tell you how it all started. Pull up a chair because a new episode of Fuel Auto Media TV, powered by Performance Engineering, is coming up. Hey everybody, Toby here with Fuel Auto Media TV, helping you connect, learn, and grow in the high performance street machine, pro street, and door slammer drag race world. On this channel, we do car features, tech how to's, interviews with industry experts, and commentaries on the automotive aftermarket. Other stuff just like this, too. So if you're new here, definitely subscribe below. Let's get to it. In 2013, I had a singular goal. I wanted to build the baddest, nastiest, most pro streetiest late model Mustang the world had ever seen. I had a dream. I had a budget. I had a plan. Considering it's 2019 and the thing still isn't done, it's safe to say that at some point, the whole thing went horribly wrong. It all started well-intentioned enough. I just finished my book, Sensory Overload, a history of the Street Machine Nationals and the heyday of Pro Street, and the idea struck build a late model, full tube chassis, pro street car with all the cool tricks. It'd be the car that one of my legendary pro street heroes like Matt Hay or Rocky Robertson would have built if they were still doing that kind of thing. My first job was to pick a body, of which I considered four. A late model Dodge Challenger, a fifth generation Camaro, a Cadillac CTS Coupe, or a late model Mustang. I discussed my plans with my wife, and she was on board with the Mustang. We worked up a $50,000 budget and a one-year timeline, hoping to be ready in time for the 2014 Street Machine Nationals, where I'd debut it just like they used to do back in the day. Like I said, I had a plan. I started looking on Craigslist for suitable cars. I wanted something that had a VIN, something that had a clean title, so that I could register it in some state, Texas or otherwise. My plan was to either take it to Drag Week, Power Tour, Maybe both, so I wanted it to be street legal. I wanted four digit horsepower, I wanted air conditioning, I wanted a full stereo. In short, I wanted all the cool pro street looks with all the technology that would make it a little bit easier on the road. I finally found a 2006 Mustang GT on Craigslist. It had thrown a rod and it was parked outside an apartment complex. The owner was getting ready to move, so he was desperate to sell it at a reasonable price. I made a lowball offer for $3,500 and he took it. Within a matter of days, my Pro Street dreams were on their way. Within days, my Pro Street dreams were finally starting to take shape. Since it wasn't running, the car was delivered to the house via flatbed. I didn't even have a shop at the time. We had a two car garage and it was filled with our daily drivers. So the thing sat out in the yard for a couple of months. I did manage to get the blown engine pulled out, not blown in a good way. I, I did manage to get the blown engine and the transmission pulled out in my driveway using a Harbor Freight cherry picker. After I stripped the engine bay, my wife and kids helped me strip the interior and the trunk as I rented it for a trip to Jacksonville, Illinois. In the meantime, I contacted automotive artist and legend Steve Stanford. Back in the day, Steve, Steve's work was all over the magazine, and it had always been a dream of mine to have a rendering that he did. I wanted it low slung, pink, with a stretch nose, zoomy headers. I wanted it to look like a fuel funny car with license plates. I wasn't sure about the graphics or the engine, but I finally told Steve to go with Hillborn Stacks out the hood for a cool nostalgic look. I was thinking maybe I'd do a Coyote crate motor with the new Borla EFI stack injection system. But then I found a blown and injected big block Chevy 
on racing junk for nine grand. Made an offer on it and was ready to go get it. A Chevy and a Ford, sacrilege. However, the owner contacted me before I set out and said the thing had been sold. So my engine plans were on hold. More on that in another episode. At any rate, I had a plan. I was gonna take the car to Rich Gebhardt for a full tube chassis, followed by Scott Sullivan for paint and graphics. They were my childhood heroes. And I thought if I could have each of them do a part of my build, it would be like a dream come true. So let me be perfectly clear. This series is not intended to bash anybody and you won't hear me speak negatively about any shop. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it? Let me be perfectly clear. This series is not intended to bash anybody, and you won't hear me speak negatively about any shop. If there's any culpability in this deal, it's mine. So this series is about the things I did wrong that hopefully I can help you avoid if you're building a project of your own. What about you? Have you had an automotive dream build that's run off the tracks, costing you time and money that you didn't have? If so, tell me about it in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel as I'll take you step by step through every misstep that I've made along the way. Hopefully, mercifully, at long last, being able to debut my build at some time in the future. Till then, this is Toby with Fuel Auto Media, telling you to keep going. Build something awesome.